America's number one show on pop culture and politics. This is the Michael Medved Show. And another great day in this greatest nation on God's green earth, where one of the ancient battles, one of the ancient elements that often animates this daily dose of debate on the Michael Medved Show is the uh, so-called debate and disagreement between religion and science. Well, we have two people, both of them, uh, one of them trained in the sciences, one of them trained in religious studies, both of whom say, wait a minute, that's nonsense. Religion and science are not in conflict. But here is the kicker. The, uh, the one that we're speaking to, his name is Michael Dowd. He is the author of Thank God for Evolution, believes that he can reconciles science and religion by taking a very, very different view of religion than uh, many American believers would share. And the other side of this debate is represented by Dr. Stephen Meyer. Stephen is the director of the Institute for Science and Culture at Discovery Institute. He is a good friend, I say in full disclosure, both a personal friend and a friend of the show. He's also the author of the triumphant bestseller, Darwin's Doubt, and he is one of the leading advocates for intelligent design. Gentlemen, what a joy to welcome both of you. Great to be with you, Michael. Michael. Thank you, thank you. Let me go to Reverend Dowd first, because... We don't know each other, but your book, Thank God for Evolution, and your work suggests that unaided Darwinian natural selection and the processes of Darwinism are actually a gift from God. And why would God feel the need to give us this particular gift? Why would God feel the need? I don't understand the question, Michael. Well, the, the question would be, if you believe in a God, you believe that God has a will. I believe that God is communicating to us today just as clearly as in Jesus' day, and that every fact discovered by a scientist is God's revelation. It's, it's a word of God. It's a, I, I say facts are God's native tongue. So God is constantly revealing through all forms of evidence, scientific evidence, cross-cultural evidence, and historic evidence. So I, I refer to that as God's evidential word. That is, God is revealing things to us today that help us live a great life and die a peaceful death and leave a sweet legacy and hopefully uh, help ensure a, a healthy future for uh, future okay, generations. Okay, very, very quickly, Stephen Meyer, would you disagree with that? Well, I, uh, in principle, absolutely I agree with that. But uh, I think there's a couple points of difference between Reverend Dowd and me. First is his view of God is not God as a person. He says that God is a personification of all of material reality. And if you read his books, carefully watch his lectures online, it's very clear that he has simply equated the physical universe and the evolutionary process with the term God, but he doesn't have in mind the same concept of God as traditional Jews or Christians. So his understanding of God is essentially a materialistic one. Secondly, he wants to say that the evolutionary process has produced everything, and I think, in a sense, he wants to venerate the evolutionary process as part of his, his evolutionary-based religion. And I think that's a very ironic uh, kind of move to make, because it, it, we're at a point in the history of biology where you have increasing numbers of leading evolutionary theorists themselves acknowledging that we don't have an adequate theory of evolution, and you have leading evolutionary biologists uh, saying we need a new theory, they're calling for a new theory, and the big reason that they're saying that is that they recognize that the mutation natural selection mechanism lacks the creative power that's long been attributed uh, attributed to it since Darwin's day. 1-800-955-1776 is our phone number with uh, Reverend Michael Dowd and Dr. Stephen Meyer. Uh, Reverend Dowd, I, are you ordained in a, uh, a recognized church denomination? I was originally ordained in the United Church of Christ. I pastored uh, three UCC churches uh, over the course of a decade, um, but now I've, I've spoken to about 2,000 uh, religious and non-religious settings over the last decade. But, Michael, can I please reply to something uh, that uh, Dr. Meyer said? Because one thing was very inaccurate, and I really need to, to clarify that. Otherwise, y'all sure, really don't understand where I'm coming from. Um, I draw a distinction between... Fictional, I would say that the single most important scientific revelation around religion or scientific discovery around religion in the last hundred years is that there's a profound difference between fictional understandings of God 
or any of the gods or goddesses of all over the world, and a factual, undeniable understanding of God. And uh, Dr. Meyer suggested that mine is a god of materialism. Not at all. I'm an emergentist. For me, God is no less than a sacred proper name, a personification of what is fundamentally undeniably, inescapably real, and I see three things that are real whether we believe in them or not. Nature is real, that's true, but mystery is real, and time is real. And so when I look at the past, I see God, I see God's work. When I look at the future, I see God's calling to contribute in a Christ-like or a, a, a positive way. When I look at nature, all aspects of nature, when I look at the universe and the Hubble and all that, I see not just God's handiwork like a clockmaker would make a clock, but I see divine revelation. So, for example, the ancients, uh, it, Moses, uh, the Apostle Paul, they couldn't see the earth through the rings of Saturn. We're able to do that, and I say that's God's revelation. I'm wanting to give God glory, give God credit for all of the scientific discoveries that have occurred for the last 500 years. And most, uh, most people in the intelligent design movement, and I actually agree, I think Dr. Meyer and I would agree on not the mechanisms, but basically the structure, the big history. I think both of us have a 13.8 billion year understanding of the unfolding of matter, energy, consciousness, and culture. And we might differ with some of the, uh, the mechanisms and the understandings of that, but big history, that is the history of everyone and everything, the academic discipline of big history, really does incorpor incorporate both of our views. And I find that hopeful. I actually think we have more in common than, than it divides us. 1-800-955-1776. Uh, Steve Meyer, are you ready to uh, join uh, Reverend Dowd in singing Kumbaya? Well, uh, not really. I've been reading his book, and it's, uh, it's, it's certainly a provocative uh, uh, treatise. And, uh, but he wants to make, very clearly wants to make evolutionary theory the basis of this religion. And you'll notice in the three things that he mentioned, nature, mystery, and time, were the three things that were undeniably real. And what he says repeatedly in his book is that reality is another name, or God is equivalent to reality, and reality is uh, nature, uh, essentially nature, the material world, which would include time. Uh, mystery isn't really an entity. It's, an, it's a state of, a, a mental state of not knowing something. So um, I don't see in his work any affirmation of a personal God, which is absolutely fine if that's the position he takes. Many of my, my best friends are atheists or pantheists. Uh, but um, what I find, uh, again, ironic is that, uh, that at just the time that evolutionary theory is really in a, in a state, uh, has reached a state of impasse, where leading evolutionary biologists are calling for a new theory of evolution, recognizing that uh, evolution, uh, uh, the evolutionary process of mutation and selection lacks creative power. You have scientists saying things like this, neo-Darwinism has no theory of the generative. Nothing, it, it can't explain the creativity. Uh, it, it explains the survival, but not the arrival of the fittest. Natural selection eliminates and maintains, but it doesn't create. Um, why would we, why, we at that point be venerating the evolutionary process as the basis of a new religion in which we would, as Reverend Dowd has uh, recommended, have, he, he's recommending we have evolutionary revival meetings. And, uh, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask rosaries. you both. I mean, uh, that, that's, let, me, let me ask you both a question, and, I, and then we'll get into this, because I'm fascinated. It says that uh, on your website, Reverend Dowd, you you offer a CD of evolutionary revival songs, and I'm I'm fascinated to see what those would sound like. But we'll get to that. Um, would you Would you both agree, right, that uh, nature, mystery, and time, the holy trinity for uh, Reverend Dowd, uh, all have a beginning? That they all begin uh, no, at some point. I, uh, we, we have the, the realm of mystery is the whole realm that not only that we don't know, but it's the realm that we don't even know that we know don't know. It's what traditionally gets associated with God, but sometimes different theories get criticized as the God of the gaps. So it's not that. The thing is, we are out of right relationship to reality. This is probably the fundamental point that I'd like to make. Is that okay, I just, I just right want to come back to my question. Well, wait, 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 wait. Before you take off, before you take off, Reverend Dowd. My, my my fundamental question, and it's really crucial, especially because of the recent information about gravity waves uh, that now everybody agrees on are evidence of a Big Bang. 
does the universe begin at some point? Is there a moment where time began? Is there a moment where nature began? We will get to that with uh, Dr. Stephen Meyer. He's educated at Cambridge University. He's at the Discovery Institute. And uh, Reverend uh, Michael Dowd, he is the author of uh, Thank God for Evolution. More with your calls coming up. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. We are joined by Reverend Michael Dowd. He is the author of Thank God for Evolution. Stephen Meyer, who is the author of Darwin's Doubt and Signature in the Cell. He is the director of the Center for Science and Culture at Discovery Institute here in Seattle. And uh, first of all, very quickly, Stephen Meyer, I would assume you have no problem at all with the idea that there is a beginning to nature, time, and mystery. Certainly to nature and time, and that is the implication of the, the new cosmology, and I would place that at this, about the same, same uh, time, 13.7 billion years that Reverend Dowd mentioned a minute ago. Okay, so Reverend Dowd, why, why are you having a tough time acknowledging that uh, nature and time would actually have a beginning? Oh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I, I, I misspoke. I would agree with, with what Steve just mentioned. To me, mystery, we have no idea, and time and nature both have a beginning. I do want to counter the idea, though, that I'm representing some kind of a minority position. I interviewed 38 of the world's most esteemed scientists, theologians, ministers who fully embrace an ecological evolutionary worldview. Literally, the top Catholics, the top Protestants, the top evangelicals, it was just called the advent of evolutionary Christianity. And even though some of us were liberal, some of us were conservative, some were evangelical, some were Protestant, I mean, we were all over the map in terms of theology and philosophy and metaphysics. We came down to three things that we all fundamentally, all 38 of us agreed with. One was that we all had a deep time understanding of reality. That is a, rea- a view that went back millions and billions of years and would go forward millions and billions of years. The second was we all had a global heart and a global commitment. That is, we were all committed not just to our own soul salvation or to our religious group or even our, our, our own nation state, but we were all in a very real sense committed to the health and well-being of the larger body of life that we were a part of. And then the third thing we all agreed on is we all valued evidence as, in some very real sense, divine communication. Now, some felt comfortable, like me, calling it modern-day scripture. Others used other language. But we all had deep-time eyes, a global heart, and a valuing of evidence. And I suspect that uh, Dr. Meyer and most of the intelligent design people do, too. So if I were to redo this, this series, I wouldn't call it evolutionary Christianity, because I no longer even refer to myself as an evolutionary evangelist. My focus has shifted from evolution to big history, because, as I said before, big history is something that Steve and I both agree on, on most of it, I suspect, whereas evolution we don't. And I think now is the time okay. for our planet and our species so that we can work together to ensure a healthy future rather than fight each other. Okay, just a, just a moment ago, just, but Michael, Michael, we're going to have to uh, tighten up answers a little bit so that we can have an answer, an ability to have conversation, okay? And uh, just very quickly here, um, you had just said moments ago that you believe that uh, time will continue for billions of years forward. The world will continue for billions of years forward. Does that mean that you don't believe that some kind of apocalypse is looming due to uh, climate change? No, I actually believe that apocalyptic thinking itself is an abomination, that that the 3,000-year history of apocalyptic end times thinking, there have been several books recently, one of them called Apocalypse Not by John Michael Greer, where he outlines the 3,000-year history of end times thinking and the kind of uh, uh, suffering and and tragedy that that has brought. So, no, I think that we could... Okay, so you don't, you don't, just briefly, just briefly, you don't believe that uh, civilization is in imminent and dire danger uh, by uh, through climate change, through global warming? Depends on what you mean by civilization. Civilization might be endangered, but I don't think humanity as a whole is. Okay, Stephen Meyer. Uh, his three key points, deep time, uh, global heart, and that evidence matters, are, of course, things I agree with. They're almost platitudes, uh, but they conceal a very big and important difference, both uh, philosophically and scientifically. Uh, He spoke of of talking with people who hold an evolutionary worldview, and there's a big difference between an evolutionary worldview and what's going on in evolutionary science, in in the field of evolutionary biology. 
an evolutionary worldview is essentially a materialistic worldview. And if you get into his work, um, he talks about uh, when he's de- he says that you know the, the principal obligation people have is to get right with reality, but he defines reality in parentheses as God slash the universe, and then says the universe is the primary entity and that we are derivative from that. That's a worldview difference. I don't think that humans and, and all of life are, are, I don't think the universe is eternal and self-existent and self-creating. And an evolutionary worldview affirms precisely that proposition, that matter and energy are the thing from which everything else comes. I think the evidence from science, and I do think evidence is matter, matters, and I do think it is, a, it is revelatory of the creator, I think it's pointing to the, to the reality of a conscious and rational agent, uh, and I, I, I believe that is God in the traditional sense. And I think evidence right, from, let's, uh, from cosmology, physics, and biology all support that idea, and we've talked about some of that on the show before, and that's what I discuss in my books. Do you are you moved, stirred by the evidence from the uh, gravitational waves and the increasing evidence of the Big Bang theory? The idea that all of matter began in a speck smaller than an atom, and that the universe exploded from there. Uh, Reverend Absolutely. Dow, does that sing to you? Absolutely. However. The, those larger scale fascinations, which I truly do find amazing, um, are to me less important now, given the challenges that we as individuals and as families and as nations and as a, as a species are facing. That's, that's my ultimate concern now is how can we work together across ethnic, religious, and political differences to ensure a healthy future for our grandchildren? And, and until we do that, these larger philosophical questions, I mean, I'm just simply not not uh, able to have a debate with Stephen Meyer on the issues that he's an expert on, because it's not my field. I'm an evangelist. I'm not a scientist. But I am, I think, qualified to speak to a way of thinking about reality. And reality is not just materialism. It's including the transcendent, the mysterious, all that we don't know so that we can work together to ensure a future, because I'm sure that we do both agree. And then, and then to ensure a future as we go to this, uh, to ensure a future as we go to this break, when we come back, we will talk about what cosmic rosaries are. 34 minutes after the hour on the MedVed Show with uh, Stephen Meyer of Discovery Institute, the author of Darwin's Doubt, and uh, Reverend uh, Michael Dowd who is the author of Thank God for Evolution. They disagree not only on evolution, but on the whole interface between science and religion, despite some important points of agreement. Let's go to uh, Sherry in Prescott, Arizona. Sherry, you're on the Michael Medved Show. Michael, thank you for having me on the show. I'd like to ask your two guests what they feel is happening to the planet based on the genetic modification of food and the chemicals that are used, such as glyphosate? Uh, Stephen Meyer? Uh, I'm not a real expert on that, so I'll pass. Um, uh, the, the little, the little, this is Michael Dowd speaking. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about that myself. I know I think it represents a tremendous danger, but I find it interesting that you called from Prescott, Arizona, because I just did a uh, trip service yesterday here in Prescott, and we went out on a walk to the oldest tree, uh, uh, alligator juniper tree in the world that the, the firefighters, the uh, granite peak, or the granite mountain firefighters, the hotshots who died at the Yarnell Blaze last year, they protected that tree, that 2,000 year old tree, just a week before. And Michael Megan, you were asking about the cosmic rosary. I'm holding mine right now, my great story beads, and I'm holding the bead that I have that represents the coming into being of conifer trees. And so yesterday I spent probably two hours in tears going through this this whole process, the walk to the tree, and then the ritual that we did there and then back. So I, I, I think I, I call this God's timing. What kind of ritual did you do there? We, uh, my wife uh, passed out uh, pieces of paper that ha- had uh, all the, n- the names of the 19 firefighters and then also species that have gone extinct in the last 100 years, and people picked from each of those, and then we simply spoke their name uh, aloud by the tree as I rang a little chime. And, um, and Wait, wait, wait. wait. And- Do you think it's comparable? I mean, you know, these firefighters were guys, human beings, with families who walked the earth, um, uh, 
a couple of years ago. Do you think that uh, it's it's appropriate that you should mourn the passing of the dodo bird as or the passenger pigeon as as profoundly as you would mourn the passing of an an individual human being? Uh, I don't even know how to respond to that. All I know is that all 30 of us that were there, that how about no? a wide variety of religious or philosophical backgrounds, found the entire experience tremendously moving. Because, yes, many of us, uh, no, we don't, it's not on par. It's, I'm not uh, equating the two. But we didn't yeah, but if you're handing that. out, if, you're, if you pick, I, I, I can pick a dead firefighter and I can pick a dodo, that's kind of insulting to their memory, it would seem to me. Well, it surely wasn't experienced that way by all 30 people that were there. The, the tears were flowing most of the time. And many people do see each species as a unique grace gift from God. And so there is that mourning. Uh, yeah, Stephen Meyer? Well, well, you know, I, I think that just the, the tension you've highlighted there, Michael, uh, shows that for many of us, ideas do have consequences. And, um, you know, I'll take Michael at his word that, he, Michael, uh, Michael Dowd at his word that, that, that he does believe in a God of some kind. But in reading his book carefully, it's, it's so, God and nature are so uh, indistinguishable that it becomes difficult to come up with a concept like the, the, like the idea that you find in the Judeo-Christian tradition that humans are, have a qualitative difference in value that they have a, uh, an intrinsic dignity that's separate from the rest of the creation. Um, and so I think, you know, his ethical concerns are overall laudatory, and, and I, I, I don't criticize him there, but um, he, he describes himself as an evolutionary evangelist, and he's embracing an evolutionary worldview. And part of that evolutionary worldview is precisely a denial of a qualitative difference between humans and animals. And I think that then manifests itself in the kind of uh, fuzziness that you would... Um, you know, that his answer betrays when you ask him, are humans and animals on par ethically? 1-800-955-1776 is our phone number. Fascinating conversation with two fascinating gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Stephen Meyer of Discovery Institute, the author of Darwin's Doubt. You can read about it up at our website at michaelmedved.com. And you can also read all about uh, Reverend Michael Dowd's new book, uh, Thank God for Evolution. Uh, that's uh, uh, These are two gentlemen who come at religious uh, scientific interface questions from fairly different perspectives, as you can see. We will be right back with your calls, and let's get to some of these um, revolutionary or evolutionary revival songs coming up. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. That's 1-800-955-1776. Okay, I need to figure out, uh, Reverend Michael Dowd, what what would be an example of an evolutionary revival song? Uh, Keith Metzger, a friend of ours, wrote one called Thank God for Evolution, and it's a celebration of all that's been revealed for the last several hundred years about what I call big history, what uh, you know, Edward O. Wilson calls the epic of evolution, or that Thomas Berry and Brian Swim called the great story or the universe story. So it's celebrating that. It's giving God glory for what's coming through science. And um, there are a number of people doing that, and uh, we do have one evolution revival service in San Diego that was quite fun. Do you, uh, do you sing yourself? Uh, I make a joyful noise, let's put it that way. Okay, uh, do you, you, you don't want to sing a, a chorus or two of uh, an ev- evolutionary revival song? Uh, well, there was one. There was a Christian church up in Canada that recently uh, invited me to speak there because there's a lot of confusion about what we even mean by the word God. And so I based uh, sort of a very, very short little thing uh, on the Tina Turner song, What's Love Got to Do With It? It's called What's God Got to Do With It? Let me see if I can remember it off the top of my head. What's God got to do, got to do with it? What's God but an ancient mythic notion? What's God got to do, got to do with it? Who needs Poseidon like tectonics made the ocean? And then I go on in my programs to show how we can actually understand God used natural processes to create everything. And it's not an either or. Uh, do you want to answer the question, Stephen Meyer? What's God got to do with it? I'm not saying because uh, I'm not so good at that. But um, 
Uh, you know, I, I just think Michael Dowd is a, just a really nice guy, a very engaging uh, speaker, and I've, I've listened to his, his TED Talk, and I think it's great he's trying to bring people together. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, he, he really is hes advancing evolution as the basis of a new religion, and I think I just want to strike a cautionary note. Before we alter our ancient ideas about God to accommodate what we think evolutionary theory requires of us, let's make sure the theory is true. And what I've documented in Darwin's Doubt is that there are multiple really formidable challenges to our our theories of evolution, in particular the standard textbook theory that we all learn in college, the neo-Darwinian theory that relies on mutation natural selection, an unguided process to produce everything. And uh, I, can't, I can't go into all the, the problems with that. No, now, no, the DNA science, the, DNA, the new DNA science. Now all you need to do, Steve, is get somebody at Discovery to set it to music. Let's set go to Chad music. in we'll Cleveland. <laughs> Good. There you go. Chad in Cleveland, you're on the Medved Show with the always musical uh, Michael Dowd and Stephen Meyer. I just wanted to uh, challenge Mr. Dowd. It sounds like he's advocating a form of, like, divinized scientism, where the only, you know, source of knowledge that we have is, is the scientific facts, and then everything else we have to push into that category of mystery and things that we don't know, which would eliminate any sort of philosophy and uh, divine revelation by God through, you know, uh, people in the Old and New Testament and that sort of thing, uh, and then taking that scientism and, and making it a, a religion. I mean, is that accurate? Is it Chad? Yes, it's Chad uh, in Cleveland. Thanks, thanks for, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, no, I wouldn't say that that's quite accurate. I do believe that we are in a uh, reformation that's larger than the Protestant Reformation. That when you, because from a big history perspective, if you look back just the two million years that Homo, Homo habilis, some form of human, has been around, for 99% of that, we went on the authority of the elders. That is, it was the elders, prior to writing, the elders carried the wisdom for how to survive and thrive. Religion 2.0 is the authority of Scripture. It's where these sacred texts around the world provide the fundamental guidance for how to survive and thrive in each of those cultures. And we're now coming into what I call Religion 3.0, which is the evidential reformation. It's where evidence provides our best map of reality, but it doesn't work. It's not another religion. It's not, it's not trying to create a new religion. It's saying that there are elements of, there are people in every religious tradition and no religious tradition that are finding that what's most important is having an honorable relationship to time, nature, and mystery. So in that sense, it does unite us. Uh, Stephen Meyer, quick. Just the way he phrased it shows that this is a very different uh, metaphysical position or worldview or religion than the traditional Judeo-Christian view. Uh, the relationship that he wants us to be in, the, the right relationship that, that uh, Reverend Dowd is encouraging us to have is one with nature, um, including time and mystery, but not with a personal God, and that's a, very, that's, that's a clear difference. And that's fine if that's his view. I just think he should own it. And secondly, I think there's tremendous evidence in science that is supporting a traditional theistic view. We have the Big Bang Theory that suggests that there was a beginning to the universe. In physics, we've discovered that the laws and constants of physics are finely tuned to allow for the possibility of life, suggesting a and fine we've tuner and much, And we've discovered much more as well, which we will continue to discover with Steve Meyer of Discovery Institute and Michael Dowd, author of Thank God for Evolution. More coming up. The Michael Medvin. Show, michaelmedved.com. We're speaking with um, with uh, Stephen Meyer of Discovery Institute and Michael Dowd, the author of the new book, Thank God for Evolution. Stephen Meyer is, of course, the best-selling author of Darwin's Doubt. Let us go to your calls to Donna in uh, San Diego. You're on the Medved Show. Um, I Hi. have a problem with Mr. Dowd. One of the most profound concepts, I think, in the um, creation concept is the concept of plant, the plants. I don't think evolutionists have a, an answer for plant-based evolution. I don't think there is any such thing. I think the Judeo-Christian concept of the seed in the first chapter of Genesis is brilliant. We're talking about an amazing, brilliant creator to come up with a concept of the seed which takes all the genetic material and compacts it into this tall, uh, pardon me, this small package and just yields just amazing plants. Okay, quick, quick comment, Michael Dowd. Uh, 
I'm right now on the evolutionary history of plants Wikipedia entry, and I, I would say that there's a lot that God has revealed to us through evidence about plants that's fascinating. It actually is just inspiring as all get out. Can I just thank, hit on that? Thank you very much for that. Thanks very much for that, and thank you, Donna. Let's go very quickly to Jerry in Seattle. You're on the MedVed Show. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, I think it was pretty pretty um, irresponsible for you to have these two folks on talking without having somebody on who can speak to young Earth. Evidence, it's abundant everywhere. Evidence, what, what do you think is the most telling evidence for young Earth, a 6,000-year-old Earth? Population. Population. Uh, Steve Meyer, last word. Well, I, I don't think that is the main issue. I think the previous caller was much more on point. Uh, the origin of plants and the origin of animals both requires huge infusions of genetic information, which is in effect digital code stored in the DNA. And I think that is the strongest evidence for personal intelligence and designing intelligence in nature. And thank you for God designing this greatest nation on God's green earth. This program was recorded by Discovery Institute Center for Science and Culture. ID the Future is copyright Discovery Institute 2014. For more information, visit www.intelligentdesign.org or www.idthefuture.com.